I'm gonna try cutting six slots to make a billet for joint trim rings. So I have a piece of uh, 950 diameter material held in my three jaw chuck. I'm gonna use uh, an eighth inch cutter to cut the slots. And right now all I'm doing is I'm picking up my location with the camera. Let me show you where I'm at there. Okay, this is showing me picked up on the edge of the billet. I've already picked up the center. You can see a faint outline of the dead center that's locating that. So I'm on location there. Uh, what I'm going to do is open Q billet and try to generate the program. The first thing you do is I'll go to joint billet because that's the size I'm cutting. He's got a separate one for joint billet, A joint billet, and butt billet. I assume that's so that you can save defaults for each one to make it easier when you do other jobs. So I'll go to joint billet. And the first thing you want to do is make sure that your indexer is oriented properly in X, Y, and Z. Well, this isn't right for mine. That's 180 off. And this is what I have. There's my indexer, here's my billet, and this little red dot is zero, zero. So that's what I'll do. Notice this changed to red because I've changed it from the default. Okay, uh, this just verifies that the, uh, the billet access position in X is zero. Uh, the face of the billet is uh, my Y zero. Safe Z position is one inch above the piece. And I've already picked up the surface, so I know where I'm at there. And the top of the stock is considered zero. I'm going to use fourth axis indexing. And here are the, the billet slot details. The default is three inches. I'm going to change that to two. Uh, the depth of 125. That looks pretty good, but let me check. I have this leftover billet strip. It's a little over 150 thick. Well, I should say in height, about 155. And the width is uh, 175. So the 125 depth, that's fine. Uh, the width, instead of 125, I'll make that 0.1. 77 just it might be a little bit loose but it'll be fine uh, with the black uh, outside on it number of slots just to save time i'm going to change that from eight to six and notice this updates it went from eight slots to six and the cutter diameter is eighth inch uh, which is correct uh, you can inset the slots from the face uh, i prefer to have the have them open Include alternate. Okay, see what that does is that adds another set of slots on the inside. I'm not doing that here. Include a saddle. Okay, that's similar but a little different. Again, we don't need that. Uh, billet diameter. Okay, this is 0.950. Final diameter. 855 inside diameter 625 so this is a pretty accurate representation of what I'm going to end up with. what I might want to do is make this depth a little bit deeper let me go to 135 let's see what changes that makes on the picture you can see it made it a little bit deeper we'll go with that uh, number of Z passes I can do that in more than one pass but this is it's a short billet it's supported on each end and uh, I've got a heavy enough cutter where it'll handle it in one pass roughing feed rate of 50 you know let's slow that down to 40 because it is a um, all in one pass take a Z finish pass I don't need to do that for this application and an XY finish pass of two thousandths per side yeah I'll do that what the heck uh, 50 inches per minute, that'll be fine. 
wrap it to the safe start, which is my um, my clearance location. I'll, I'll go with that. And wrap it to a hundred thousandths over the top of the stock. Yeah, I'll do that rather than feed it down. And that looks pretty good. So I'll create the G-code. It asks me if this name is okay and uh, the location is right. And I'll say okay. Now I come over to uh, mock and uh, I'll load the G-code. Okay, it's showing my cutter off to the side. Let me move my cutter on location. So what I do there is I just tell it to go from camera to tool. And let me let me get onto the onto this to show you. I'll hit camera to tool. And this will move directly to zero zero location. Zero zero, and I'm an inch and a quarter above the part. Okay, got that out of the way. Let's go back to what we're doing here. Rewind the program and just take a look at the G-code here. And rather than main and sub programs, this generates everything as uh, one long program, but that's fine. You can see it, you know, all the moves for this location here. Cuts this slot, comes around, and then indexes to the next location, does the next slot, and indexes. I'm going to give it a try. Let me fire it up. Well, let me uh, re aim the camera. You know, before I start that, Let me double check this thing here. Now if I go into toolpaths, you generate the toolpath. First of all, I look at the program limits. My X varies plus or minus 26 thousandths. That's, that looks safe. The Y range, it goes plus 162, which is uh, basically half of this. It's a little over the cutter diameter. I don't know where that number comes from. I'm sure Kelly's got a, a cushion built in there so that when it plunges down, um, the cutter's not going to uh, gouge the piece. And then it also goes to minus two inches, which is um, uh, the length of the slot that I wanted. The Z range, it will go to minus 135 deep, which is what I programmed, and plus one. Uh, the Fourth F axis range is, uh, it'll vary 300 uh, degrees. And this is the depiction of the program. And that looks okay. So I'll go back to the program run screen and uh, get you back on the workpiece.
Okay, we got a nice snug fit there. I probably pushed that a little hard, but uh, that's fine. I'm gonna run that through one more time. In fact, uh, I will change my settings slightly. So you can see what I do here. I'll put that feed rate down to 30. So basically I'll be running the same program without the roughing cut. It'll just go in and take uh, just the, the one pass at the same setting. In fact, I'll bump that a couple of tenths. Three tenths. And first I'll go over here and I'll close out the G-code. Create the new program. Load the G code. And try again. See how this goes. Oh yeah, that's that's a perfect fit there. Actually, I should probably run a, some sandpaper in there, but that'd be perfect. If I wanted to, I could have just run another, either run the program once more or opened it up a little bit. But I think that's good to go there. <laughs> 